PlayStation 5 spec reveal falls flat enormously with most PlayStation fans. What was the impact and how can they fix? Let's get into it. What's up, people? What's up, people? What is up, peoples? It is your boy, MM2K, back again with another video. Do me a huge favor before we get into this episode of The Medicine. Hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button. Rock those bells for notifications, please, so you know when your boy's dropping these doses. I appreciate all of y'all straight up. Y'all know the deal. Y'all know the reason why. And y'all know the slogan. I am not too proud to ask. Let's get into it. All right, so... PlayStation 5 spec reveal was was done and hosted by Mark Cerny. It was supposed to be a spec reveal that was going to be done at GDC had GDC still if GDC was still being held. Um, and I understand that. But in lieu of Microsoft dropping news on Monday and then having Digital Foundry following up on that news with their version of a spec reveal. Sony immediately then announcing that they're doing the same thing made people say, oh, shucks. Sony must feel comfortable. They must have saw what Microsoft did and said, okay, we got something better to show. And boy, were we wrong. <laughs> because there were just some simple things for them to do that they did not do. It has long reaching ramifications. However, all's not laws. I still think Sony still has the edge because of their pedigree, but they need to do some things to solidify that pedigree going into the next generation. So let's get into all that. First and foremost, what was it that they needed to do that they didn't do? All Sony needed to do, as I said in my prior video, was two things. First, talk about what they have in common with the Xbox Series X without any numbers just say we got ss we got ssd we got um you know ray tracing or what you know all that stuff that they have in common we have our dna2 architecture custom built all that stuff that they have in common just get that out of the way so they can check those boxes and move on also they should show games in lieu of that to focus in tangible terms for the gamer what they can do better and if they didn't have games available then they should have covered that ground and just talking and focusing on how their particular specs in certain areas were just better again show no numbers just check off the boxes that you have in common and talk about what you have better either showing it or talking about it you know what i'm saying in a tangible way to gamers and they clearly didn't do that. Here's what they did wrong. They got into what my friend Chase of Stadia Talk likes to say, the P's and Q's, fighting with Microsoft over Bibberwatts and Gigahertz. That was the wrong thing to do. You punched down. Microsoft has to do the stuff. They have to talk power to, to at least create a base of relevancy because they're not known for having the games. You don't need to talk to stuff, Sony. And I get that this was supposed to be the GDC talk like I talked about earlier, but who cares? People have been latching on anything Sony has to say, whether it's at GDC, whether it's at CES. So any presentation that they do, that they was going to do, was going to include gamers of all stripes, not just, uh, not just tech junkies, okay? So in getting into the Bibblewatt babble, they highlighted their perceived weaknesses more than any strengths, and they were punching down. I want to show y'all something that highlighted exactly just that. And this was said by Jason Schreier. All right. Um, Jason Schreier says, seems like a bad marketing move to release a technical spec sheet that looks significantly worse than your biggest competitors then put out an incomprehensible hour-long lecture video rather than showing actual game footage to demonstrate what makes your console unique. But hey, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And he followed that up with something else poignant. He says, I shouldn't have to be the one saying this. 
but the PlayStation 5's SSD is a huge deal and could actually change the way games are designed. Meanwhile, gamers will just look at side-by-side -side specs and believe the Xbox is superior. And that's interesting. That's an interesting quote. Sony's marketing couldn't have handled this any worse. And I wholeheartedly agree because I followed, I retweeted his comment and I said, Jason Schreier couldn't have been more spot on. What in the world was Sony, Jim Ryan, and Mark Cerny thinking? Getting into the P's and Q's instead of highlighting their benefits and has SSDs leading to better worlds, etc. And saying, we basically do the same thing elsewhere. 20 minutes. You could have locked that down in 20 minutes. Unbelievable. You know what I'm saying? So, here's what they should have done in that vein. And if MM2K what, what was a, a rep, a, a VP or whatever at Sony, this is what I would have done. And, and you know, they, I think they should have done something in, in this, this form or, or something of this light, right? I would have said that GDC conference, I would have scrapped it or said, we're going to do it at a later time. We know that there's tech junkies that we want to appease. And maybe we'll just send this to Engadget and, you know, Wired or, so, you know what I'm saying? Uh, um, or Digital Foundry. Tell them that this is this is not for the general public and just have them embellish on this because they embellished on what Mark Cerny had to say better than Mark Cerny himself, you know what I'm saying? But what I would have done for the gaming public that is thirsty for news is I would have had a showcase instead called Beyond the Numbers and Immersing Gamers in the Experience, all right? And I would have started off by talking about the past growth of the PlayStation generation to generation in a similar fashion to what Sony was doing, but he was talking solely on SSDs that made no sense to anybody. I would have just talked about the great feats that they made generation to generation. And then I would have said, our competition boasts several next-gen features. And then, but we have them too. As we said earlier, the PlayStation 5 will incorporate blah, 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 you know, RDNA 2 architecture, uh, fast loading, da 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 right? And then I would have followed up that with, but if we go beyond the numbers and talk overall experience for the gamer, let us say this. We didn't just make an expensive box that looks good with numbers on paper. We are bringing you next-gen technology not seen elsewhere to immerse the gamer. It's all centered around custom-built intensive intensely fast SSD that not only loads twice as fast as the competitors, but allows for worlds to become more immersive and built differently when put in the hands of developers. This goes beyond just visuals, but gives the player gameplay immersion they so seek. We can't wait to show you in the future this technology at work. However, rest assured, with PlayStation's pedigree of in-house game development, uh, development and our strong external dev relationships, you will be able to witness some truly amazing results. All right, but they didn't do that. <laughs> that hey, look, that would have that would have neutralized any hype. It just kept it an even playing field, or went above and beyond it if they had gameplay footage to go along with it, right? But you would have done your job. You would have bought yourself another day to wait until you got all your ducks in order to do the reveal the way that you want to do it. Now you've added pressure to yourself. You know what I'm saying? Unnecessary pressure to yourself. And it has long reaching ramifications because if you go on Twitter and look at what people are saying about the PlayStation, if you go anywhere and look at what people said about that presentation, it's not looking good. And people were eyeballing X. I know some diehard PlayStation people that said, you know what, I might just be getting the Xbox Series X. But all is not lost. That's just speculation. That's just emotional talk. But they've got to do some things quick to fix it. What do they need to do to fix? Well, they need to have another showcase soon explaining how they will advance gaming with this tech. Then they need to mention new games soon. Just mention a few games, a few console exclusives for the PlayStation 5. Then they need to internally have the tough talks, all the VPs, Jim Ryan, everybody, and consider and coalesce a plan around locking this thing at 399 just for now right like they, they they need to make contingency plans around locking in at 400 okay i would then do a big reveal before you have to lock down the price because there's a time during the year that you gotta lock down the price so i would do a big reveal before then right and then i would just 
I wouldn't I wouldn't mention the price there. I would just do a big reveal, show a bunch of stuff, you know what I'm saying, E3 style, whatever, without mentioning the price and say, stay tuned as we give you the official price. Then I would wait two to four weeks to engage people and see if they're now enthused. Oh, this tech looks great. Oh, now it makes sense. Oh, yeah, I would spend $500 on that, okay? And then after that, do a state of play where you go a little bit more in depth with some of the games, and then you do a price reveal, right? And again, if during that two to four weeks, if consumer engagement is now back in your favor where it, you know, justifies a $500 price, you go with the $500 price. But if after you did your big shebang, if it still didn't resonate, you're gonna have to stick with $399. <laughs> Period. And those are just my thoughts. <laughs> but you know what I'm saying? That's it from your boy MM2K. Let me know what you think about all this in the comment section below. Because, like I always say, I'm curious what I think. But if you did like what I had to say, check out the links below to follow me. Those links will lead you to the Broadband Bullies, PNTS Network, Hard Knock Digital Culture, and yes, here at the Stadium. Do- well, oh, excuse me, sorry. They're not the Stadium Dosage. But to the Stadium Dosage as well. Fastly growing. You know what I'm saying? Check us out there. And what I said, look. I said in an early video that before this PlayStation 5 spec review, Sony was up 21 nothing in the fourth quarter. Single-handedly with this press announcement, they threw, they threw a pick six, and on the kickoff return, they fumbled in the end zone. Some uh, football analogy for those that watch American football. It is now 21-7, 14, excuse me. Still in their favor because they have that pedigree. But they got to use that pedigree to their advantage and they got to speak in layman's terms how this tech is beneficial to the gamers to justify it being on the big stage with the Series X. All right, period. With that said, you all have a wonderful, wonderful gaming day. Peace.